This morning, police and safety groups have expressed concerns over thousands of children who are enrolling for driving lessons, some as young as 11 and 12. There's been a huge increase in the number of schools offering the courses. They say they're teaching youngsters vital skills for later life. But the Royal Society for the Prevention of Accidents said the lessons could make youngsters overconfident and more likely to crash. Keith Doyle reports. Jack is just 15, but he's already mastered the basics of driving a car. And got to follow the road round. Good. Well he's done. one of thousands of children who are being taught to drive off the public roads long before they are legally able to hold a driving license. There are dozens of companies now offering the chance for young drivers to get behind the wheel. Here, children as young as 11 can drive as long as they're a minimum height. An hour with a qualified instructor in a dual-controlled car is 55 pounds. If I keep coming every so often, in two years' time, when I'll be able to start driving properly, I'll be used to just in getting in the car and driving, really. Well, I'm 12, but I'm a bit small, so I have to sit on a cushion to be able to see the road. But it's good for when you're older to make it safer and easier. We're teaching youngsters the vital skills that they're going to need for later on in life to, to drive. Learning at this age when they, they're very keen to absorb and to retain a lot of what we teach them will definitely make them safer drivers. Well, despite this weather, these children are clearly enjoying their driving lessons. The theory is that when they reach 17 and can legally drive, this will have made them better drivers. But not everyone agrees that this is a good idea. Driving on, on one of these courses at 11 year old, I mean, it's another six years before you can get a driving license. And, and how does it replicate the real, real world, the spontaneous incidents about what, what happens? I mean, are kids mature enough at 11, 12, 13 to understand what's happening on the road and to be able to kind of manage uh, all, all the demands and pressures? Safety groups fear these lessons will make it easier for 17 year olds to pass their tests with less experience of real road conditions. Practicing how to drive a car is not a good thing at an early age because it will probably mean that the youngsters take fewer lessons when they come to learn to drive. Um, if they take fewer lessons, they'll get less experience and that means when they pass their test, they may well be at greater risk of crashing because they won't have had as much experience. Allowing drivers practice on roads from 16 cut accidents amongst newly qualified drivers in Sweden by 40%. In Britain, one in five newly qualified drivers have an accident within six months of passing their test. I think it's a very good idea. Uh, anything which gets young people accustomed to the car and a bit of responsibility in coordinating movement is a good thing, particularly if it also teaches them to be considerate of other people. Back in Birmingham and the young drivers are getting experience of driving in bad weather. The growth in lessons for children is a fairly new phenomenon. It will be some years before we know if they will make our roads safer. Keith Doyle, BBC News. Well, let's talk about that now with Peter Roger, who's Chief Examiner of the Institute of Advanced Motorists. Good morning to you. Good morning. Is this just people sort of indulging their kids? Because clearly they're loving it, the children are loving it. Or is it serious and is it worthwhile? It's serious and it's probably worthwhile. We won't really know until these... Uh, youngsters have gone through the process, have had a chance to acquire a driving licence and driven for a while. It's only then that we'll know whether actually it was effective at reducing their accident rate when they start to drive. But the idea of teaching children in that gap in your early teens when there is no other road safety education input of, of any uh, substance uh, so that you can deal with their attitudes when youngsters are developing their attitudes and give them quite simply uh, behind the wheel time so that by the time they're actually learning to drive they can concentrate on things outside the car as opposed to how to control the machine. But it begs the question in a way, if it's proven that these youngsters have less accidents, because we know there are alarming figures about the numbers of newly qualified drivers who have accidents, it's a really worrying statistic, if it's proven then surely there's a logic for formalising this arrangement, you know, when people are 16 that they should have access to, to that kind of arrangement more regularly because it will save us all money in the long run. Well, the whole process of learning to drive isn't formalised. The, 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 formal, the formalisation bit starts when you take your driving test. Up until then, it's a, uh, we all do it our own way. Mum and Dad teach some people. The vast majority of people take lessons with an independent driving uh, instructor. There isn't a set formalised procedure for doing it. We're, we're very relaxed as a country about how people learn. What we do is we say, these are the things you need to know. 
The thing that we do know about young people is that the vast majority of them don't set off to have an accident. It's something that happens, the word says it, doesn't it? It's an accident. Um, but they're having them because of a lack of experience. So let's try, at least, giving them some. Some people would argue, in a way, the reason why young people have accidents isn't necessarily always to do with the skills they have at the wheel. I mean, it's perfectly possible with some of these, these youngsters here who might be very good drivers by the time they pay, take their tests are still, they're still young people, they're still 17 year olds, and they're still likely to make mistakes because of their age, because of, you know, recklessness that's linked to their age. You see what I mean? Rather than their skills at the wheel. Because often very skilled people at the wheel still have accidents because they're reckless. So because, because they're reckless or they simply make mistakes and get things wrong. Yeah. Uh, and that goes on right through adulthood as well. Uh, otherwise, older adults wouldn't have accidents either. People get things wrong. There is some research from, I think it's New Zealand, um, that says that you don't stop developing the bit of your brain that deals with risk and danger until you're about 25. Um, but the reality is we all have to grow up. The reality is in today's society, the vast majority of people need to do some driving. Uh, the reality is that we know that down in the, particularly right at the very early parts of your driving career, you're likely, more likely to be involved in an accident and that experience behind the wheel is going to reduce the chances of that. Mm -hmm. So let's develop our children's attitudes uh, correctly and let's develop their skills so that when they do start to drive independently on the public road amongst the rest of us, they are less at risk and so are we. Give them a chance. OK, Peter Rogers, Chief Examiner from the Institute of uh, Advanced Motors, thank you very much for your time this morning. Something we're going to be talking about throughout the morning this morning, so give us your thoughts, tell, you, tell us if you think it's a good idea, maybe your children, maybe you yourselves have been through that process, so do let us know.